Hi, this is Bill Punch. This video is one of, of a series of videos used to support the class from Michigan State University, the Introduction to Computer Science Using Python CSE231. This particular video will take a look at our first program, identify some of the structural aspects of the program, some issues with the idle editor, and then preview the things that we need to cover in subsequent videos. Let's get started. I have on the screen in front of us the idle editor opened on this first program, example one. When we open idle, as we always have, the, we get the shell program that we can type into and get interactive responses. And then I also have open this first program, uh, example one.py. There's a couple of things that we can notice about this first program. First are the colors in the idle editor. The colors identify some of the structural elements that occur in the program. Let's take a look at a couple of those. The first one is the things in red. These are comments. Comments are not evaluated by Python, but are uh, transmitted as is so that they can be read by the user. Comments start with the hash mark and then continue to the end of the line. The hash mark can start anywhere in the program, but pro uh, Python ignores then anything beginning with a hash mark all the way to the end of the line. The second thing are strings entered in green. A string is a sequence of characters delimited by a quotation mark. So anything that's in green is something that's delimited by a quotation mark. A string, a sequence of characters. The third color is uh, a kind of purple. These elements are Python keywords. They represent operations that Python uses represented by these keywords. We can't use them for variable names, for example, but we can use them for their operations. If we were to save, and I mentioned this earlier, a Python program, save as, without the .py at the end, notice that the colors disappear. Python assumes that something is a Python program only when it ends with .py. If we save it again, add a .py to the end, replacing the old one. It remembers that it is indeed a Python program and does the coloration. You'll get used to the colors, they'll be very helpful. A couple things in our program then, let's talk a little bit about some of the keyword operations. Here is one called input. Let's see what input does. Input is a function. The function is delimited by its parentheses. It takes a string When, it return, when I evaluate it, it gives me that string back exactly, and it sits there and waits for me to type an answer. One, two, three. The value that I typed is returned to the program as a string. That is, it has quote marks around both sides of it. So the element between the parentheses is the prompt, which is typed to the user. The other one is the print statement. Print also takes parentheses, it's a function. And we delimit in a print statement elements by commas. So this print statement has three things in it, a string, a comma, an integer separated by comma, and another integer, and when we hit carriage return, it prints the string exactly, the first integer and the second integer. Two other things that we have in our program are int. The value that gets returned from input is a string. If we want to convert the string to an integer, we run it through the int function. What comes back is int. Same thing for float. Floats represent decimal numbers. If I return one, two, three as a string, it returns one, two, three is a floating point number. Notice that there's a, a, a decimal point zero at the end. So those are the elements of our program. We're gonna go into a lot of these in more detail, but I just wanted to give you sort of a quick overview. If we were to run our program, so here's the editor. We go to run, run the module. The program is run. It does what the first line asks for, which is to give me an integer, one, two, three. 
give me a floating point number, 3.14159, prints back the two values and does some operations on them. So to go with the, the run that we just did, these two input results gathered the information from the user, we converted those two pieces to integer and floating point numbers, then we printed out some results, a string, comma, the original value, comma, the string and, comma, and the original value. And then we print it again, a string, comma, an operation, comma, another string, comma, and another operation. So this code, run exactly, produces this output. We are going to go through a lot more detail on this, but this is our first Python program.